And welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, May 14th, 2012. I'd ask everyone in attendance to join us in singing O Canada. Thank you to the National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio rendition. So we'll move on to the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Could I have a uh, motion for that set of minutes? Councillor Crokin. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I move minutes of the regular board uh, meeting of uh, council held April 30th, 2012. Thank you very much, Councillor Crokin. Any discussion or debate on the set of minutes? Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gavin. Just a correction, uh, the uh, Grand Spirit meeting was a management committee meeting, not the annual general meeting. There was an there was a annual report, so there was that connection probably, but it was a management committee meeting. Okay, thanks Thank very you. much, Councillor Radburn. We've got that catch. Any other discussion or debate, errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries and bring us to uh, the adoption of the agenda. We have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Councillor Gustafson. Thanks, Mayor. Given I'll move the council adopt the agenda as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Any discussion or debate on the agenda? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. And that motion carries. Uh, this brings us to the delegation portion of our agenda, which is the opportunity for anyone in the community who wish to address council on any community related matter to come forward. Uh, I don't see anybody. I think the warm summer weather has uh, kept everybody out of doors, and so we'll move <coughs> on from the delegation portion of the agenda into public hearings, of which we had none. Uh, unfinished business was next. We had no unfinished business from the last meeting, and that would take us into item 8.1 reports. Um, Councillor Rice. I would move first reading of bylaw C1237B, an amendment to the municipal development plan. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Uh, maybe we could just have a brief introduction from administration. Uh, Mr. McIntyre. Mayor Given, bylaw C1237B is an amendment to the MDP uh, to, I guess, formalize Council's uh, intent to uh, work with the uh, disabled and handicapped to uh, ensure that the, the planning document um, advocates for and provides and encourages barrier-free access uh, in the course of development generally. Okay. Thanks very much, Mr. McIntyre. Is it? Uh, is Councillor Rice has the motion for first reading. It's not really open for discussion and debate before we've had first reading, Councillor Rice. I so. know. I just want to ask a clarification sure. question. Uh, my understanding was it was only for city-owned uh, facilities, That's Michael. Correct. This is the emphasis, yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. okay. Uh, so a motion for first reading. I'll call for the vote. 
Thank you, and that motion carries. Councilor Rice? I move that Council establish Monday, June 11th, 2012 at 6.30 p.m. at City Council Chambers be the date, time, and location for public, uh, public hearing purposes for bylaw C-1237. Thanks very much, Councilor Rice. Any discussion or debate as to date, time, and location of that public hearing? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. That would bring us on to the committee business and item 9.1, Public Works Committee. Councillor Gustafson, can I handle that set of minutes for us? Okay. I will move the council adopt the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held May 1st, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Gustafson, I think you had a bunch of motions. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move the council approve the addition of the 2012 capital plan for 505000 for the Bear Creek Slope Failure Recovery Project, fully funded by the 2011 Northern Alberta Disaster Recovery Program. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Do you have any uh, detail to add? Uh, just when it was really wet there two years last year, we had a number of Bear Creek failures, and this is, this is the way that the uh, province is going to help us repair those areas along the creek. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Any discussion or debate, questions or comments on the motion? Councillor Wong. Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. I was wondering if Councillor Gustafson could be more specific on the locations that are going to be repaired. Councillor yeah. Gustafson, you'll have to hit your microphone there. Uh, the areas that we are that we are approving tonight are Elks, right beside the Elks Hall there, 106th Street and 108th Avenue. Uh, Center 2000, there's a slide there. 102nd Street and 89th Avenue slope failure. Uh, the walking trail east of 75th Avenue. Uh, South Bear Creek Road. And 68th Avenue slope failure project. Well, thank you very much. Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. And I'm glad the government jumped in on this because of the wet season last year. And I know some of it is done in some of the areas and some they're still doing. They're not all done yet, right? Councillor Gustin? Uh, they've done so few emergency repairs, yes. but basically nothing's been done yet as far as I understand it. Okay. Um, and I'm looking forward to this. It just shows if you build too close to the, the banks that you could have problems. Thank you. Thanks very much. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move the council approve a request to extend the period for subdivision approval and endorsement for the subdivision application Z100008, southwest of the 27th, 716 west of the 6th, for an extension period to expire on May 6, 2013. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. <coughs> Thank you, and that motion carries. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you. I'll move that Council allocate $50,000 from the future expenditure reserve to undertake an internal traffic, parking, and pedestrian assessment of the Community Knowledge Campus. Now, as we all know, um, East Lake Centre has been a huge, huge hit other than the parking, so this is the way that we're going to uh, make sure we're parking as many people in there for as long as possible and they'll be able to get in and out of there as easy and quick as possible. Thanks, Councillor Gustafson. Any discussion, debate, questions or comments on the motion? Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Gavin. Uh, Councillor Gustafson, this study would be like maybe where we might add a few more parking lots, the best location there, or is it in, for parking? Because we know it's very limited there right now. Well, the school's going in there, and I'll look for some help from Mr. McIntyre on this one. Um, if you could, please. Mr. McIntyre. Mayor Given, I think the, uh, the essence of, uh, of the story is that uh, although the, um, the long-range planning for the CKC site was done some time ago in terms of for the Koch Center and St. Joe's mm -hmm. Haas um, High School and Gymnix and so on, um, the, the province is planning in, in terms of its, its engineering studies and so on for 
uh, the uh, current um, high school proposal did not include, the, the project scope did not include looking at the traffic impacts on 68th Avenue or the surrounding road network and consequently um, city transportation engineering wanted to make sure that council was fully aware of and prepared for and that the province would have the benefit of that information before <coughs> committing to a final design. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Radburn. Um, that clarified things as I was going to mention that as well. I think part of it is uh, that the, uh, the high school is, uh, has a greater capacity than initially uh, intended. But also just to look at the uh, traffic flow um, and, uh, and parking and even pedestrian, uh, I guess, traffic along there. I think it's, uh, I, I really support this investment. I think it's a time to take a look to see what we do need, what we do have and see that uh, things will work uh, pro uh, even more efficiently uh, when the new school uh, comes on, on board. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor uh, Radburn. Councillor Wong. Thank you very much. Um, either Mr. McIntyre or Councillor Gustafson can answer this. Is that project or is that study going to affect the lights that are, gonna, <coughs> that are scheduled to go up right in front of St. Joe's? Mr. McIntyre. That information, as, as I understand it, will be important to the, the, uh, the way the, the light, that intersection is designed with, with uh, the lights. I don't think there's, a, there's any question that the lights will be required or the signals will be required at that intersection. Um, I think the overall objective is to make sure the internal uh, design of the roadway, parking and so on, and how it connects to the intersection um, are done so that a we understand what the what the limitations might be, and secondly, um, what engineering, what detailed engineering might meet, need to be done to make it all integrate and work smoothly. Do we have some kind of idea of the timing of how long it's going to take for the study? I, it was my understanding that those lights were scheduled for this year. Um, the idea is to get this traffic impact analysis done as soon as possible. Um, it's not, it's not my understanding, according to transportation engineering, that, that it would delay the signals going in. Uh, they are separate projects, but I think it's important to understand that one could have a bearing on the other. Great. That's the information I was yeah. looking for. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thanks very much. Any further discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Gustafson, you're not finished yet. Eh? Sure, one more here. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mayor Given. I'll move the council approve the transportation infrastructure improvements as proposed for the Muskoseebee Park main entrance at 102nd Avenue, as well as the entrance on 105th Avenue. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Was there anything else that you wanted to highlight from that set of public works minutes, Councillor Gustafson? Uh, well, we had a lengthy discussion on the Muskegee Park entrance, as of course, and um, we will identify a really nice entrance feature to put there eventually. That's really about all. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. I, I believe couldn't that, agree on one. I believe that brings us to the CDC meeting, and Councillor. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor Given. I move the council adopt the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting held on May the 1st, 2012. Thanks very much, Councillor Croken. Did anyone note any errors or omissions on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. <coughs> Councillor Croken, did you have any business arising? I don't think you did out of that meeting, did you? Um, I'll just, I'd just like to uh, make one notation that uh, Pace was there and gave a presentation, which was uh, uh, Ms. Jackie uh, aiken Keish and Kay Taylor and Mrs. Neighbors uh, with Pace. They reported to the committee on Pace programs which help children, adults, and families who've experienced sexual abuse and trauma. The delegation reviewed the Who Do You Tell program, the Pace training uh, series, and the Women's Support Group. It was noted that training sessions are offered three times a year. so. It's a very, very worthwhile uh, endeavor they're, they're doing in, uh, in our city. So that's everything, Mr. Mayor. Excellent. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Uh, I believe that brings us then to 100th Anniversary Committee and Councillor O'Toole. 
Thank you much, Mayor Given. Pardon me? Rice. Oh, sorry, Councillor. Sorry, I had my next two committees reversed there. Excuse me. Councillor Rice for 100th Anniversary Committee. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I would move that Council adopt the minutes of the 100th Anniversary Committee meeting held on May 3rd, 2012 with the following change under Reports 2.1. It's AUMA to meet with Alberta MPs, yeah. Members of Parliament. Um, and they are there as we speak in Ottawa, and we've asked them to uh, discuss with the members of Parliament the cancelling of the Cultural Capitals grant. Okay. Excellent. Thanks very much for that catch, Councillor Rice. Any uh, discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Rice, you had a couple items of business. Move that Council approve in principle the concept of a contract between the City and the Grand Prairie Regional Tourism Association for the selection, provision, and sale of City 100th Anniversary souvenirs. In speaking to that motion, we were very excited that Grand Prairie Regional Tourism has stepped up <coughs> like this, and we think it'll be a huge asset uh, to the 100th Anniversary celebrations. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Rice. Um, I move that Council appoint a Councillor O'Toole to the uh, Anderson Hall Site Redevelopment Committee. And speaking to it, the college has uh, uh, taken down Anderson Hall and so they have a strip that they are now uh, determining what they're going to do with it and they want it to be something that could be a legacy for the 100th anniversary so they asked the 100th anniversary committee um, for a representative and uh, the committee agreed unanimously that we would never find a better one than Councillor O'Toole. Wow. Okay, thanks very much Councillor Rice. So. This is the recommendation from the committee then? Yes. Okay. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Anything else you want to highlight from that set of minutes, Councilor? Uh, no, I, as I mentioned, we were very, very, it was a huge blow uh, when the federal government canceled the cultural capital grant. Uh, we had to do a shift in our planning. Fortunately, we started early enough that we could make those shifts. Um, the, one, the committee unanimously agreed we need to keep the production of a high-end history book and a homecoming celebration. We will then be talking to the various community groups who are eligible to apply for a couple of, of other grants that they can, uh, you know, that they can access. Uh, Mrs. Harper has been extremely helpful in searching out alternatives and uh, we will look at planning events around what community groups uh, are prepared to come forward with and what grants they can access. Okay, excellent. Thanks but so we're much, still going Councilor to need Rice. money. No question. No question. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Um, Councillor Redburn, do you have a question on that? Uh, I do. On the minutes? On the minutes? Yep. So, uh, Helen, or... David, somebody, can you just tell me a little bit about this community play? And uh, it has a significant budget that says that it's self-contained. Who's, uh, where are the funds coming from? Councilor Rice? Uh, they are raising on their own. They had, of course, asked uh, for some money uh, through the Cultural Capitals Grant, should we be successful, and they've been advised that, that we have no funding to give them. Uh, it's being spearheaded by Annie Smith from the college and Wayne Ailing. And so um, they will have to go out and fundraise again as some of the groups that I mentioned earlier. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much, Councillor Robert and Councillor Rice. Okay, this time I think I got it right. Councillor O'Toole, the Municipal Government Day Team. Thank you much, Mayor Given. Uh, I'd like to recommend, um, I, motion, er, I make uh, a recommendation the Council adopt the minutes of the Municipal Government Day Team meeting held on May 4th. 2012. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Any errors or omissions anybody caught? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. 
And that motion carries. Councilor O'Toole, anything that you care to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, just since the, the meeting, we've uh, launched the uh, I Love Grand Prairie Kids Art Contest. And uh, Mr. Olinger can comment on that with the schools. Mr. Olinger, do you have a microphone anywhere nearby there? Certainly I do. So uh, we've uh, launched the uh, uh, art contest this year. We've, uh, with the uh, uh, public and separate and local, uh, other local uh, schools, what we've done is uh, we've uh, turned it up a notch this year and uh, had the uh, opportunity for uh, digital art uh, this time in terms of PowerPoints or slide presentations or, or movies. In addition, students can still do the traditional artwork that they, they might have in the past. And uh, so we've been working with the, the two school boards uh, and, and the other school boards in the region, as well as the Center for Creative Arts. Excellent. Thanks very much, Mr. Ollinger. Yep. And, and just uh, thank you. Thank you very much, David. And the Grand Prairie Get Active uh, 2012 Amazing Race is looking to be something that will be talked about for at least a year. and. Uh, <clears throat> We're going to have a number of uh, rest stops and points where uh, an active uh, process will be demanded from us, members on council, and uh, guests. So that's looks, where we're at. Looks like an exciting day. We're looking yeah. forward to it at the end of the month. Uh, Councillor McLean, did you have a question? Yep. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, to Councillor Tool, and I know it's too for parking at the Catholic Church, which I don't think a lot of people realize, so hopefully that's promoted in the paper for parking. There's about 900 stalls there, so that would be a big venue for people to park because there's limited parking down there for this event. Okay. Thanks very much, Councilor McLean. Uh, if there wasn't anything further on Municipal Government Day team, and that's all of our committee business. Uh, we had no items of correspondence. We had no delegations tonight, and there were no notices of motion, so that would bring us to Council Member Reports and Councilor O'Toole. I believe you had two of the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum and the Regional Archives. Yes, thanks very much again. Uh, the archives will be having a film and story tea. Traditionally, we've been having these sort of events in the evening, and it just uh, seemed to drag out a little bit too late at night, and uh, some of the people were falling asleep before the stories were all done. So that'll be held on September 22nd, and it'll go from 2 o'clock till 4 o'clock, and that'll be held at the museum. Thank you. And also the cemetery walks. Uh, it's been a... Uh, walking tours uh, give you the dates for those they've usually been a f fairly good sellout over the years and this year it's going to be Wednesday June 13th and it'll start at 7 p.m. also July 11th 7 o'clock start again and August 8th 7 o'clock start and I'll just go on to the Philip J. Curry sure, please. I just uh, like the bring up a few items that have happened in the last month or so. Dr. Curry has been uh, given the honor of being uh, bestowed an honorary Explorers Club medal. This is the highest honor of the prestigious 108 year old club. Uh, some of the people that have uh, been given this over the years is American Robert Perry and Matthew Henson in the 1909, uh, the first people to reach the North Pole. And uh, just that's just the start. Uh, what else we got here? Um, we got uh, the coin that's been uh, out, the dino coin. Uh, the city, or number of people from this city, including uh, different uh, organizations, have been trying to order these coins. And we've been told that they've been sold out. So uh, if you get one, consider yourself very lucky. There was approximately, I think, 12,000 of them that were initially uh, uh, printed. So they are a done deal. If you get one, you're lucky. And uh, just a couple other things on uh, what we got here. There's going to be a vintage tractor revolution on uh, May 26th, this coming Saturday. Is there, they have over 50 tractors that are going to be used in a parade. And there's over 21 sponsors that signed up and have had at least one tractor. They're going to have a parade around the Wembley area. And uh, that's one of the fundraising uh, ideas that they've got for the Wembley area. 
the dyno ball is continuing to uh, uh, work and get people to come, uh, invited guests as in VIPs. And uh, there's a guy named Nicholas Cage that's been asked and he's got an interest in dinosaurs and uh, he's checking his schedule. So I didn't really want to say it out loud. He's teasing us again. But he's been asked, it's up to him to say yes or no. And he's going to be here too. Matthew Gray Goobler will be here. <coughs> and uh, that's about it. I got to. Uh, uh, Helen. Anything else? Uh, I want to. Uh, Don't let her get you off track. Yeah, no. I, uh, I wanted to bring up the library board at this present time. The library uh, staff have uh, got a uh, learning language learning uh, program over there and uh, they actually won, uh, uh, won an award this year uh, it's called Mango and they were actually teaching pirate to some students on a Saturday afternoon they got dressed up and they actually beat out Edmonton and Calgary and all the other uh, public libraries in the province so hats off to the staff at the Grand Prairie Public Library for teaching pirate. Now the best pirate speakers in Grand Prairie. Aye laddie. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, Councillor Rice I think we'll move to Councilmember Roundtable and we'll start with you. Okay. I attended Recycle Plus to uh, view their new sorting machine, which is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, anyone taking bottles in, I think, what did they do, uh, 190 bottles in three minutes or so. It was just a phenomenal number, and it it sorts them. Uh, it's it's actually worth taking a trip just to see the machine work. It's It's incredible. I attended the Heritage School Fair. Uh, and uh, excellent remarks, Councillor Radbird. Uh, it was some of those projects were just fascinating. I could have spent all day there just looking at the projects, and uh, there was busloads of them came in from Peace River and so on. It was very good. I attended the Grow United uh, breakfast um, put on by United Way, and. Uh, you can just see the, you know, this community um, has a phenomenal track record of supporting uh, the, the local charities. And on uh, Saturday, uh, I attended at the M&M Cobblestone uh, location to flip uh, burgers for Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. And Councillor O'Toole and I had just an awesome system happening, man. So uh, a very good project, and it was it was steady. You didn't there was no downtime happening there. So uh, those were my activities. Excellent. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice, and we'll move to Councillor Crokin. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, on April 11th, I was at an economic development conference with uh, Brian Gavin of the department. And uh, we got an awful lot of good ideas working towards an economic profile of Grand Prairie in hard copy. As the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo has, they do have a little more money than we do, but it does profile and shows information on, on uh, everything from uh, their United Way. Was, they got $4.4 .4 million donated to the United Way from their community. So it's, uh, it's very nice to have something like that. Uh, the 22nd, I, I attended the Peace Library meeting uh, in Grand Prairie. On the 21st, again, I was uh, MC for the Earth Day Habitat for Humanity, along with Councillor Rice. Uh, she was the auctioneer. And we, uh, we raised, uh, or they raised uh, $6,000, uh, thanks to Amy from uh, Aquaterra. On the 26th, I attended Alberta Library Conference uh, in Jasper. And two of our trustees of the library board were also along there with us, and uh, our CEO of Peace Library System, Linda Duplessis. And uh, there are an awful lot of uh, great things happening for our libraries, and we have to, uh, to sell them a little more in our communities because uh, kids are sure learning uh, from going to the library. 
On the 30th, I attended Protective Services uh, Workshop in Nisku along with RCMP Staff Sergeant Ray Noble and Protective Services Director Bill Walker. The name of the conference was, question was, ask your police and fire chiefs the right questions to get the right answers. Well, Bill was giving me an elbow quite a bit through the uh, whole session and uh, um, one of the, the, the key questions was how many police and firefighters do you really need? And uh, I got a different kind of answer from <coughs> Bill and, uh, and uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Ray Noble. But uh, it's a great discussion by the researchers that uh, did research in the greater United States and uh, in the, the United Kingdom. On uh, May the 3rd, I also attended the open house for the plus two bottle depot to witness. It's called the Anchor Anderson Sorting and Counting Technology. <coughs> Not just the old bottles and cans. It's, uh, it really does speed up the work uh, for the staff there, and it's, uh, it's great technology. I'd ask them actually to go one step farther and start crushing and sending out the uh, aluminum and ingots. But apparently it cannot happen because we're too close to BC and some bottles and cans uh, or the, the aluminum might infiltrate. That was the answer. I said, well, it's strange. But I had attended a development appeal committee meeting on May the 4th. And as uh, other members of council, I flipped hamburgers at uh, m and the fundraiser for Crohn's and Colitis. And uh, a big hand and thanks to the Tinworth. They, uh, they have the the tents set up in front of both of their locations and it's a it's a fun thing and uh, they told me that that the the pump there was not liquid ketchup it was a hand cleaner so anyway that was uh, how things went for me the last couple of weeks thanks very much councillor croton councillor gustafson thank you mayor given I attended the land use workshop in uh, at City Hall here along with uh, other members of City Council. Very informative and look forward to the new land use bylaw coming out as soon as we can. I had uh, We had a 100th anniversary homecoming subcommittee meeting. Uh, uh, didn't take us long to count our money, but we're still trying. And I went this past weekend here. I was uh, fortunate enough to go to the grad ceremonies out of the tech center. And, it always excites me to see all the beautiful kids starting a new chapter in their in their life. And uh, last couple last week here, I've been TSN is putting a contest on to give your community 25 grand towards uh, towards a uh, capital investment in your city. So so I've started a short video in, in regards to that. And I'm going to send it away. And if anybody else wants to do that, it, uh, it's craftcelebrationtour.ca is where you can enter for that contest for your, for our community, Grand Prix. And finally, I'd just like to say happy Mother's Day to my mom. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Radburn. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, May 1st, we had Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting. We talked about uh, membership in our Industrial Attraction Strategy uh, Ad Hoc Committee and uh, interviewees. Uh, we had a GPRTA presentation. Ainsley joined us. She's actually a member of our committee now. Uh, May 2nd, the opening night uh, short reel film festival. Congrats to Terry Serbach and her cast of volunteers and sponsors for an excellent event. May 3rd, United Way Growing United program and breakfast. That's been already mentioned. And then also I did speak on behalf of uh, council and the mayor at the open house and tour of Recycle Plus 2's new sorting and counting technology. Uh, May 4th, I brought goodings at the Regional Heritage Fair at Montrose Cultural Centre. And May 5th, I attended on behalf of uh, our Mayor and Council uh, Grand Prairie Regional College Convocation Ceremony. Very well done. Uh, and uh, one of the neatest parts of it was uh, when it was all over, the, uh, um, those of us on stage uh, went out first, and then we aligned ourselves along each side of kind of the walkway uh, out of the gym. And as the, uh, those who were participating in the ceremonies came by, we all gave them high fives and clapped for them. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I think, a, a nice touch. Uh, that uh, They started that tradition a couple years ago, apparently. Very cool. May 8th, I attended the 100th Avenue and 92nd Street Functional Study Open Houses. And I attended the, in the evening uh, Red Cross Day Proclamation by our mayor and, uh, and the film that they had. 
uh, Land Use Bylaw Workshop on the 9th. 10th, I represent a council at the Arbor Day Tree Planting Ceremony at Ecole Nouvelle Frontière. Um, and uh, at a GPRTA board meeting uh, that noon where we started to work on uh, policy revisions. And then I went back here to do a tender trails and sidewalks tender. Uh, also that evening, went to the Dream House uh, ribbon count, cutting, counting, and counting and cutting uh, ceremony and reception. Um, May 8th, attended the Conference Board of Canada presentation by Mary Lefebvre. Very interesting, very, very interesting. And they're looking at developing data that might be even more useful to mid-sized cities. And so we were quite interested and gave some input in terms of what kinds of things uh, we might find useful. Uh, and then that evening, I brought greetings uh, on behalf of uh, Mayor and Council to the Northwest Regional Persons with Developmental Disabilities Spring Celebration and Awards Night. Uh, very exciting uh, evening for those who attended um, with the awards, and they did a karaoke uh, and dance afterwards, which uh, they were uh, really enjoyed. And May 12th, actually, I had uh, just read it someplace, but I went to the Mental Health Expo at uh, East Link Center. Um, we had an open house on the 12th and uh, spent an hour chatting with different booths and uh, people who were there and I uh, found it uh, uh, really interesting uh, and uh, pretty well attended given uh, the weather was getting a little nicer. But uh, just as a reminder that that uh, segment of our health services I think is really, really important and we as a community are doing our best by working together to meet the needs of our residents. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Reverend. Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much. I, uh, on May 2nd, I attended the Real Shorts Film Festival screening of Love Notes. It's a collection of short films with the theme of love, and it was a very well uh, organized uh, group of films, and there was many people from council there. Uh, I, on the May 3rd, I attended the United Way Grow with United Breakfast and a program hosted at the Holiday Inn. I also attended the Open House for Plus Two Bottle Depot and toured the uh, facility. And uh, on May 4th, I had uh, was able to go to the opening ceremonies for the Northern Alberta Regional Heritage School Fair held at uh, Teresa Sargent Hall. And uh, Councillor Lauren Radburn gave a very uh, touching uh, speech to the children that were attending there. On May 5th, uh, the Wapiti Shooters Club hosted the GP Petroleum Association uh, shotgun sporting clays, and there was 250 shooters, which is the largest shooting event ever, one day shooting event, held in Canada. And uh, it was held here, and I don't know what the economic spin-off was, but uh, um, they were here for a couple days anyhow, so there's a number of people with hotels and meals. Uh, on May 6th, I attended the finals of the Real Shorts Film Festival, the best of the best, and that uh, was on Sunday evening, and it was a very enjoyable evening with my wife. On May 8th, I attended the open house for the 100th Avenue and 92nd Street uh, redevelopment, uh, Muscosipi Park, and thanks to Norman Kyle for doing an excellent job with uh, answering the questions that were given to him at that point. On May 9th, I attended a half-day session with the Draft Land Use Bylaw Workshop. And on May 10th, I, in the evening, I attended the Dream Home Open House and Ribbon Cutting and bought my tickets. May 11th, tender opening. And uh, also later that night, I attended the Persons with Developmental uh, Disabilities for the Northwest Region of Alberta. There was about 300 young people in attendance there was many awards given out to many people there and uh, it was a very touching evening and opened up my eyes and uh, it was, uh, I'm glad I went. Uh, later that evening I went to the Jim Stokes and Carmen Hackstead uh, uh, presentation of their artwork at the new gallery in Grand Prairie, new rebuilt. And uh, on May 12th I flipped burgers at M&M's for the Crohn's and Colitis uh, Foundation. And today was the first meeting of the Anderson Hall mm -hmm. site redevelopment, and I attended that today. So Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councilor Tool. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. On May 4th, I also attended Northern Alberta Regional Heritage School Fair, 
And the greetings were very good uh, from Councillor Radburn when you, his passion, his life was learning and education that came out in his greetings at that event. Um, and what I noticed quite a bit there was themes from the children were Terry Fox, who's one of my heroes, War of 1812, Vimy Ridge, and about the beaver. They were two or three different, they were shown the most. May 8th, Stakeholders Open House for 100th Ave and 92nd Street. I was at as well. As well, May 8th, I brought my two girls, Kendra and Kara, to proclamation reading for the Red Cross um, at the library. And they had a lot about the ladies at World War II for the Red Cross. I'm not sure how many, it was between three and 600 of them that went over to World War II from nurses to changing tires to mechanics. And uh, I got through half of it and wanted to stay, but I was told it was time to go. So my, f my four-year-olds, we had to go. On May 9th, I uh, was also attended the dra draft of the Land Use Bylaw Workshop. And it uh, looks like there's going to be another one coming up. And there's quite a bit of issues of talking in there, and I look forward to it. And as well, I was on uh, May 11th at the uh, Czech presentation at East Link Center for Warehouser Canada. They donated $75,000, and I'm hoping that we get uh, the rest that we were hoping for in the next couple months from uh, hopefully other businesses in the community, and as well, I'll speak to Warehouser, which I'm employed at as well. They employ over 600 people in the area, and this doesn't include subcontractors. And if you add that in, I'm sure it's getting close to 1,000. And they're a big employer in the community and forestry. So that's everything. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor McLean. Councillor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Given. On May 2nd, I was at the Real Shorts Film Festival, and I'm not ashamed to say that I like short shorts. They were, <laughs> the, the films were excellent. Um, I just wanted to congratulate Terry Sherback for another extremely successful festival. And I also want to say a thank you to our city manager, Greg Sherback, who takes a portion of his own holiday time out to volunteer for this event. Uh, on Thursday, May 3rd, I was also at the United Way breakfast, and I just wanted to point out one thing there. Um, the City of Grand Prairie is in the top five of organizations that take part in their payroll deduction program. So uh, anyone out there or any business out there can participate in that, and your employees can contribute as little as $1 per paycheck to get the ball rolling on that, and I'm sure that the United Way appreciates every donation that comes their way. On Friday, May 11th, I was also at the Art Gallery opening, uh, along with Councillors O'Toole, Rice, and Mayor Given. Uh, many people out there, they complimented the facility, um, which is both a historic building as well as a new gallery. Um, Mayor Given performed the inaugural rub ribbon cutting, and I was really fortunate to receive a gift from Carmen Haxted. Carmen donated his ribbon seeker oil on wood painting to the city of Grand Prairie. Um, and uh, it's one of the first publicly owned pieces of art that the city now has. And I think it's a fantastic piece uh, to add to our collection or to start off our collection. Um, I was wowed by the facility and so were a lot of people there. I just wanted to commend past councils, uh, staff, the architects and the contractors who worked on that building because it is an excellent addition to our city. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor Rice. You can have a second turn, sure. Uh, thank you, I just wanna to add to that. I, I just want to say that uh, I guess for me at that opening, um, it was really exciting to see the new galleries open, but equally important, I think, and, and more heartwarming, the excitement of the curator, Robert Stephen, as we opened those galleries, uh, left no doubt as to part of the reason. Part of the success of that facility is the quality of that facility, but equally important is the, the passion, the dedication, and the quality of the, of the staff over there. So. I, I commend him for that. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Um, I'll move on to my roundtable report. Uh, seeing as a number of the items have been already covered, I'll, I'll go through it fairly quickly. On May the 2nd, I also attended the opening of the Real Shorts Film Festival and uh, would like to add my congratulations uh, to Terry and all the rest of the organizers and volunteers for bringing such a high-level international festival to Grand Prairie. On the morning of Thursday, I was also at the Grow United United Way Breakfast, which was seeking to bring in more employers into their, uh, into their program. 
On Friday the 4th, I attended and took part in um, a funding meeting for the County Rec Board. The County of Grand Prairie provides uh, grants to not-for-profits and community organizations through uh, various recreation board agencies uh, across the county, and uh, they've invited me to sit on the one that surrounds the, the rec boards that represent the area surrounding the City of Grand Prairie. Uh, later that day, I also had an opportunity to attend uh, and visit at Grand Prairie's Mosque. And uh, it was stunning for me to see how many uh, people were there in attendance on a Friday afternoon. Um, and was really actually very, I was very, very surprised by the size of our uh, Islamic community. It was fantastic to see. Uh, had a chance to meet with a number of the people as they came out uh, from their uh, worship session. And it was interesting to hear the concerns. A very common thread, obviously, there were those that were concerned about community safety given uh, some of the robberies in the last little while. There were others that were interested in recreation facilities and uh, others that uh, had a lot of comments about what a positive and inclusive community Grand Prairie was. So that uh, was a great opportunity. Uh, the next day I was had the pleasure of making the proclamation of Palliative Care Day uh, here at City Hall. Uh, did that uh, to help the organizers who were hosting a Palliative Care Conference in Grand Prairie. I believe they had over 200 attendees and uh, it was a fantastic event and happy to see the City of Grand Prairie host that. Uh, sorry, the community of Grand Prairie host that. On the 8th, I attended a half-day session at an age-friendly workshop. Uh, this is an initiative put on by the provincial government to encourage communities to bring together uh, partners from different community sectors to help their community become recognized as an age-friendly community. Uh, as was mentioned before, the next day there was the Red Cross Day proclamation and the Conference Board of Canada presentation. On uh, the 9th, Excuse me, actually, the, oh, sorry, on the same day, the 8th, actually, I had the opportunity to attend in the final day of class at a Roots of Empathy class. My daughter Mila has been participating in the Roots of Empathy program, which is um, headed up by our city uh, community social development. And this is an opportunity for uh, newborns to go into classes for the first year of their life. Uh, and so Mila had been going into a grade 2 class about every month, so they tra keep track of her development, her growth and development. Uh, the intent is to help children understand uh, the needs that we all share as humans, and I can say that it was a it was a really it was a lot of fun. I know that uh, my wife Susan and Mila both had a great experience, and I think the kids did as well. So, thanks for, very much to everybody at Swanhaven School and Miss Barristow's Grade Two class for having us in. On Thursday the tenth, I also attended at the ribbon cutting for the Dream Home, and on Friday the eleventh, I was there at the East Link Center to receive the check from Warehouser for their contribution of seventy five thousand dollars. And that evening, I was also at the Jim Stokes and Carmen Hackstead uh, opening at the gallery. I should say hopefully that's the, I, I have a feeling that's going to be the first of two ribbons that I'm going to get to cut. The gallery basically has three out of what will eventually be seven gallery spaces open now. Uh, there's a large one that many people in the community might be familiar with. Uh, and then they open two smaller spaces, but there are still another four spaces yet to be opened when the full opening of the gallery comes, I believe in June, I think is their target. In, in the, the grand, grand opening will be September. Thanks, Lois. Um, I would rem remind the community that uh, the Stokes Hackstead uh, exhibit will be open again later on. I think they've closed uh, a little bit so they can finish up some final touches. Uh, on Saturday the 12th, I also attended at M&M Meat Shops to do the uh, barbecue flipping, the burger flipping for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. And later that afternoon, I spent a little bit of time sitting above a frosty pool of water for the CNIB. Uh, as part of their community carnival celebration. And I uh, wanted to thank the CNIB for inviting me out. I wanted to thank them for providing warm weather and a nice warm towel afterwards. And also recognize uh, that at least two of our City of Grand Prairie firefighters were there as well and were willing to get up on top and put themselves in harm's way to help raise funds for the CNIB. And with that, that was my report and I would call our meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.